good day youtubers ladies and gentlemen boys and girls from all around the world got our first set of dead eyes done of course part of that was getting the mast permanently installed with the uh, rings on there for each deck we got the mass put together. We got the crow's nest and all the brackets and everything shaped. So, I don't know if you can see it there in this view because of the background, but the hole in this pewter block for this piece of pole here was too far out because they want more separation between the two poles but the base piece doesn't let you have that much separation the way it's built so I had to obviously modify the base piece to fit the poles but um, definitely change the shape of the ends of both pieces to get them to work together in that configuration. And then we had the same problem here where the, uh, the spacing between the two poles and the hole that's in the base of this and the um, allowable room at the bottom of there didn't line up right either. So we had to modify the end again of both pieces to fit. And of course I did drill out because the hole in there was only like two or three millimeters, maybe four millimeters. And I had to drill it out to match this. I think that's uh, eight millimeters on the end. So both of these had to get drilled out to get them to work in there. So once we figured out how to fit these and make it look straight and uh, not be crooked, Give us that straight effect going straight up. I put the glue to it and glued it together. So then the next day I installed it on the ship after I let it dry and did the first uh, set of dead eyes and shrouds. So <clears throat> I got some jigs here from the old model <clears throat> that I can put on the dead eyes, but I gotta scrunch these nails together a little bit in order to fit in the dead eye because the dead eyes are a lot smaller than the jig was made for. But the other trick was getting the lacing through there so with this tool I'm able to stick it through and get the rope into that opening of the tools and a needle threading tool I'm able to get the rope in there and then pull it through without because you start from the back and come out the front and go up and down up and down so when you come down the first time you got to go in the back and come out the front so you gotta be able to fish that thread through there without bending these out and breaking them off so that's a little tricky and then getting the spacing right so they'll all match is gonna be a little tricky and that's where the uh, templates come in handy it helps you get the shroud tied on at the right height and the right tension 
and then you lace it up afterwards. So I think this is a step process that's a little different than <clears throat> the way I've done the other ones. But there's a lot more room behind the dead eyes on these bigger ships than there is here. And that makes it a little tougher to work. So that's what we'll work on next. And <clears throat> as the, uh, the progress I got so far this week. Um, my evaporator fan motor and my air conditioner broke down. So I had to go work on that. I did get her back up and running. The Frigidaire brand package unit, the air conditioner that runs the whole house, uh, was installed in 2013. So the evaporator fan quit running and I went and took it out. I got a little troubleshooting process to figure out what was going on, but um, I didn't have the right size capacitor to replace it, but when I tested it on the bench, it started working again. So it's one of the intermittent problems. I did go ahead and buy a new capacitor and <clears throat> evaporator fan motor. So when that does quit, I'll be ready to replace it. <clears throat> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I got it running, so I'm going to leave it running until it quits. I got the parts. I can fix it myself. When it fails, if it ever fails again, I hope it doesn't, but I'm prepared. Because a service call something like that in Florida where air conditioning is a big business there's a lot of money I'd probably pay some outside company more than $500 just to replace an evaporator fan motor between their labor and parts We got some chickens laying eggs, maybe. Of course, Mrs. Fluff is always up in here. Any penny. Any penny. Are you sitting on anything? Oh, yes. But you didn't lay that. I know you didn't lay that. Because this is from one of them big Rhode Island red chickens. Maybe you'll lay one later. I think you are laying them, but you're not laying that one. She must be broody. And of course, I said the other day, I think the other chickens are picking on her. So she stays up there all the time. We got a ton of rain. Gert. Oh, there you are. Killed him. The big red chickens lay the eggs. Their butt hanging out. Out of the nesting box and they fall on the ground. Yeah, I gotta take that separator out and get these flocked together. Oh, one egg so far. And the air conditioner's working. So, I'm not gonna work on this anymore today because of my dilemma with running to get parts and all. 
sort of tapped out for the day. But to give you an idea of what I did this week, of course we did the poles last week and then this week we assembled the mass as all one piece and then we stuck it in the ship got the three rings on there added a little cleat got that on there and then the next thing was dead eyes and shrouds so I got to work on those next. They do have some oh what do you call that? Can't remember the name of that. What y'all want to wrap? Mm, yeah, in the past I used to put these <clears throat> dead eyes in the vise and tie the shroud and then do all this wrapping, cinching they call it. Do all the cinching while I had the rope stretched out and I could cinch it real easy with nothing in the way. Because once you try to put it on the ship and try to cinch it, everything's in the way. So you do it in as individual pieces in the vise and then cinch it. And then take that over to the ship and run the rope up and through and just tie it off on the top. That way, you don't have to worry about the way this looks. All you got to worry about is the spacing when you lace it up. So I might do that for the rest of them just because it's easier to work them. Especially now that I see that we should cinch these up with a little light colored thread to make them look better. And before I actually make them in the vise, I'm going to have to cinch the one on there that I already got already. And then we do the shrouds for the top section of the mast. And then we start setting cannons in place. Okay, we're getting close to... I guess once you do all the stuff on the mast, then we'll... And you're getting close to putting all this stuff in there and filling it up. So it'll take it a little while to get these shrouds and dead eyes done. You know how that goes. It's always fun doing shrouds and dead eyes. And then you got to do the right lines after you get the shrouds and dead eyes. Man, oh man, oh man. Thanks for watching.